All right, Algebra 1, 5.4, we have uh, talked about uh, slope-intercept form. We have talked about point-slope form. Now we're going to talk about standard form. And standard form is one that, depending on the story problem, it's a situation that I do use, um, and I just want to, um, that's what the examples will teach you to recognize that. It's great to use slope-intercept when you know the slope and the intercept, like in a real-life equation, um, that would be the rate of change, like how much something costs per hour, and how much an initial fee might be, like a membership fee. Uh, standard form, though, is a little different, so let's just first write what standard form is. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C. That's a standard form of a linear equation, okay? Um, everything can be written in, in standard form, so we let's just go to the example and I'll show you. It says write two equations in standard form that are equivalent to 2x minus 6y equals 4. So to find equivalent equations, it's kind of like finding equivalent fractions. You remember when you were littler and I asked you to find equivalent fractions for like 2 thirds? One way would be to multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, and you would have 4 sixths, and that would be equivalent. It's the same thing here. You can take and you could multiply through this whole equation multiply all of them by 2. That would be 4x minus 12y equals 8. That's one way to make equivalent equations, is to just multiply through by the same number on, on the whole part of the equation, both sides of the equals. Okay. Another way then, if we're multiplying, the uh, goes hand in hand with multiplying, would be to divide. You could take and you could divide all of these by the same number, and notice they're all divisible by 2, so that would be x minus 3y equals 2. So that's just a way to make equivalent equations. And they're doing the same thing I did. So example two, write an equation from a graph. Write an equation of sta in standard form of the line shown. Okay. So like always, the first thing that you need to do is you need to write uh, the equation. You'll notice that, let's go back here to standard form. What's different about standard form than anything than slope-intercept form? Let me write slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. Okay. What's different is that the x and the y in standard form are on the same side. They're by themselves. Okay, over here. So that's what we have to do is if it's in slope intercept form, we in slope intercept form we had to get the y by itself. Now in standard form, you got to get the x and the y together on one side of the equation. So let's go to example number 2. Okay, first thing we got to do is we got to get a slope. You know, we always, if we're writing for these equations, we have to know the slope of the line. So we have two points here, 1, 1, and 2, negative 2. So we're going to subtract, and let's just go 1 minus negative 2 over 1 minus 2. Boom, boom, that would be negative 1 over negative 1. No, that's not negative 1. That was not right. Boom, I boom, boom that, didn't I? 3 over negative 1. So my slope is negative 3. Okay? So if my slope is negative 3, now the book is going to go a little different route than what I do. I know slope-intercept form really well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put in what we kind of did in the others, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to get it in slope-intercept form, and then I'm going to move and put the x and the y over on the, the left side by themselves. So I know the slope is negative 3. I'm going to pick one of the points, 1, 1. I'm going to substitute that in for the x and the y, and I'm going to find the b. And you recall we did this, I think, in 5.2. So that's going to be negative 3 plus b equals 1, add 3, add 3, 4 equals b. So I can write in slope-intercept form y equals negative 3x plus 4. OK? 
Okay. Now it wants it in standard form. Well, standard form has the x and the y all together on one side. So I need to move this. I need to get rid of it on this side, add 3x, add 3x. So I have 3x plus y equals 4. Now I have it in standard form. Now that may be a little different. I think they use point slope form. So you can watch what they do. They use it in point slope form and then simplify it into standard form, which they end up with the same thing that we did. I like to use slope intercept because it seems to be the most common. Okay, so write two equations in standard form that are equivalent to this. So look, go ahead and let's just multiply everything by two. So let's go 2x minus 2y equals six. And I don't see anything that they can divide, so let's multiply everything by three. 3x minus 3y equals 18. You can multiply everything by 400, whatever you want. So there's two of them. And they, those are the two that um, they have. I, did I multiply wrong on that one? 3x minus, wait a minute, go back. That was supposed to be, didn't I multiply everything by three? That should be a nine. I'm not doing very good. All right, write an equation in standard form of the line that goes through. So the first thing, I'm gonna do what we did in 5.2. I'm gonna get it in slope intercept form. So like always, the first thing I'm gonna do is find the slope. Notice they're long, this is long. So negative one minus negative three over three minus two. Boom, boom, so I'm gonna get positive two and one is, two is my slope. So y equals mx plus b, even though they don't want it in this form, this is what I'm gonna get it in and then switch it to the standard form. So I'm gonna put a two right here, and I don't think it really matters which one we use. There's the x, there's the y. So let's just use the first one, times three plus b, negative one right there. I'm just substituting them in. Simplify. So minus six minus six, negative seven equals b. So I can write my equation y equals two x minus seven, minus two x minus two x, negative two x plus y equals negative seven. Now it is in standard form. There's a negative there. I was kind of freaking out, I wasn't sure. Write an equation of the specified line, the blue line and the red line. All right, remember we have vertical lines and we have horizontal lines. Um, vertical lines are lines that cross the x-axis. Horizontal lines are lines that cross the y-axis. So the blue line is a y-axis, it's just y equals, and where does it cross at? Negative four. The red line, x equals, It's just a matter of where those lines um, cross the y-axis, or the x-axis, depending on. That's it. Find the missing coefficient of the equation of the line shown. Write the completed equation. ax plus 3y equals 2. So this is missing, huh? Right there, that's missing. Well, not sure. Um, you know, look at this. Ax plus 3y equals 2. There's a point right here. We know a point, negative 1 and 0, which is an x and a y. Check it out. We are just missing a. We know x because it's right here. There's x and there's y. So let's substitute in what we know and solve it. So a times negative one plus three times zero equals two. Uh, that's gonna be a negative a plus zero equals two. Well, you don't have to say zero's nothing. So negative a equals two, so positive a equals negative two. So a is two, 
So negative 2x plus 3y equals 2. That was just a matter of recognizing that I knew what x and y was, so I could solve for a. Let's see how they do it. They wrote the equation. Yeah, they did it the same way. Look at that. And then simplified it out. And put it back in there. Write equations of horizontal and vertical lines that pass through the given point. All right, so basically if you think about a grid, right, negative 8, negative 9 would be like down in here. Well, there would be a line that would go this way. So you want a line this way and a line this way. Well, this line crosses at negative 8. This line would cross over here at negative 9. So remember, that crosses the x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. This one crosses the x-axis at negative 8. So just what's the x? x equals negative 8. And what's the y? y equals negative 9. That's it. That's all you got to do on those. Okay, so in this one, what's x? 13. So x equals 13. What's y? Negative 5. Done. Find the missing coefficient of the equation of the line that passes through the given point. Write the completed equation. Oop. Okay, so again, they give us an x and a y. So let's just put them in. Negative 4 times negative 1 plus b, which we're trying to find, times 1 equals 7. So simplify. 4 plus b times 1 is just b. So 7 minus 4 minus 4. b equals 3. And so we just put it in. So negative 4x plus 3y equals 7. Done. Again, substituting in what we know. ax, this is x, this is y. a times 2 plus 11 equals negative 3. So 2a be a negative uh, minus 11 minus 11 negative 14 equals 2a divide by 2 a equals negative 7 so negative 7 x plus y equals negative 3 hang on I thought there was more there is more hold on continue go back I'm missing an example. Sorry, guys. So uh, let me clear this out, and we'll do it right here in the next example. All right, so example number five says, your class is taking a trip to the public library. You can travel in small and large vans. A small van holds eight people, and a large van holds 12 people. Your class could fill 15 small vans and two large vans. Write an equation in standard form that models the possible combinations of large vans and or small vans and large man, vans that your class could fill. So you know, here's the, what's cool about it. A standard form is I pin ax plus by equals c. This allows for two different types of situations. Small vans, large vans. Um, hamburger, you want to buy hamburger and chicken. You want, um, you know, it's girls and boys. So there's there's two different things in standard form. And notice we have small vans and we have large vans. So eight people can fit in a small van plus 12 people can fit in a large van. Okay, that equals your total number of people or whatever letter you want to put right there. Okay, it says um, write an equation in standard form. Your class, it says your class could fill 15 small vans and two large vans. So small, you can fill 15 of these. So it's going to be 8 times 15 plus 12 times 2. So that's going to tell us how many kids. 8 times 15 is 90, plus 12 times 2 is 24, 
So you can have, um, uh, that's not 90, is it? Zero, that's 120, sorry, would be 144 people. Okay, so that's, um, we wrote the equation and we found out how many people. So graph your equation from part A. So in order to graph our equation, we would have to, um, the best graph for this situation is to use the intercepts. When x is uh, zero, so you would just cover this up, you have to cover this up and divide these by 12, your y-intercept would be 12. So you would go over here and on your y-axis you would go up to 12 and put a dot. And then you would make this one equal to zero and leave the eight. So use intercepts when you graph with standard form. Divide by eight. So eight goes into 144, uh, one, six to 18 times. So you would go over here at 18 and then you just draw your line. And then see, it says list several possible combinations. So then once you graph it, and it's not very good because I don't have it on graph paper, you're gonna see spots in here, places where um, there's, uh, places where they cross the corners, those are possible combinations. Okay, again, I'm gonna go back, shoot. So it says in example five, let me clear this out. In example five, it says, suppose that uh, eight students decide to not go on the class trip. Write an equation that could model the possible combinations of large vans and small vans. Okay, so you still have um, eight F, eight X plus 12 Y, but if eight kids don't go, 144 minus eight is 136. So there you got 136 kids, all right? So uh, we graph it. So you cross off this, this is divided by 12, okay, and find the intercept. We do this one, cross off that, divide both by eight, find the intercept. Draw your, you find your intercepts, draw the line, and then find where they cross, okay? I'm gonna leave that to you because it's hard for me to do without the graph paper. Um, please ask, I can help you through that. Um, get as far as you can and give it a, keep giving it a shot and we'll keep working with the standard form. And I think I'm finally at the end. Okay. Ooh, I hope it was, okay.